Hello. I wonder if you've noticed that there are two kinds of constrained menus in Maya. One is right here, constrain. And that's what it looks like, motion paths, for example. That's probably the reason why it's under animation here. However, when you go to FX, special effects, that is, you find end constraints. And the end constraints are totally different from the constraints under animation. So let's go back to animation and start with the with these con kind of constraints. Some people say they're legacy. They are not legacy. They've been in Maya since version 1, actually, most of them at least. But um, of course you use them every day. They're in the mechanical world, whereas the end constraints are in the dynamic world so uh, of dynamic simulation. So let's create, for example, um, a cylinder and a torus and move the torus over here pick both of them in a certain sequence and now we go to constrain and aim constrain that's just one of about 12 constraints you can have and nothing seems to happen however when you want to move the cylinder up uh, it does not work it wants to sort of orient to the torus and when I move the torus up and down uh, the cylinder follows. So the cylinder is bound to the torus and uh, to the torus's position in that case that's what the aim constraint is all about. And uh, basically you can now animate the torus and the uh, cylinder will always follow. That's a typical mechanical constraint. Now let's create a new scene and go to FX and we go in to use two end constraints the terrible surface and the transform constraint the cloth simulations which work together with the end constraints and cloth with end constraints uh, need two things they need a mesh not a NURB surface you can always model in NURBs and then convert it to a mesh to a polygon surface and for example we can create this box here and the second thing we need for dynamic simulation with n cloth is high resolution so we go to polygon cube and we move the values for the subdivisions up quite drastically so we have a very high dense 32,000 polygons I think now and we can make it a little bit thinner like this move it up a bit and give it another color and now we make this cloth so we go to FX and cloth create and cloth so it's a standard cloth now uh, which doesn't do very much when it falls down but you see it does a little bit this kind of deformation is there's a wind resistance here and uh, this is why it kind of it's fluffy it's cloth okay now let's use the constraints there are several tutorials actually loads of tutorials about uh, n cloth uh, with Maya on the out in the internet and I've done several as well but uh, now it's a constraint it's constrained day today so let's pick for example uh, edges and double click on that one so we have the whole way all around it and we want to end constrain this with a transform constraint now what happens now let's create a tearing constraint uh, right mouse click and vertices for change and let's make those and those terrible and not the ones at the bottoms, bottom so I deselect them here so these ones should be terrible and actually that one as well like this so we have a whole row and we can deselect this one so we go to end constraint and create a terrible surface so these parts here uh, are marked now and they can be torn 
let's see if they are torn already with this dy dynamic falling down. You see, it already works. It uh, depends on the dynamic structure of that cloth. If it's a um, t-shirt or silk, they behave differently. But you see the tearing already works quite nicely. And that's the dynamic constraint world at work. Well, that's all I wanted to show you. And bye-bye. <laughs>